Hey traders, this is Trevor. I've got a pretty interesting market set up I want to highlight for you, uh, which will explain why I am taking, uh, why I'm really getting deep, heavy into SPY calls into next week's expiration. But I also have a put hedge on there in case uh, I'm wrong or I'm wrong before I'm right uh, and the market, you know, consolidates lower before uh, going higher. So let's talk about the setup here. We've got a, um, this is the daily chart of the SPY. Here's today's hammer candle. Essentially we opened or we closed where we opened, tried to sell during the day, but the bulls came in and, and brought it back up. This is a, a bullish candle here, especially when it's at all time highs above the five day moving average, which is the orange line with the five day trading above the 10 day, the 10 day trading above the 13, which is trading above the 20 and which is obviously then trading above the 50. So this is super bullish, great big uptrend, you know, big rally consolidation of some of those gains, fill this gap right here, and then a nice rally, you know, spring rally again there. Then we pull back in to the 10 day moving average, we spring up again, and here we are at all time highs. Okay, notice the close, 299.31. We are sitting on uh, SPY 300, SPX 3000. Um, you know, in fact, the futures are already trading above 3000 and traded most of the day above 3000, but closed above it today. This is all super, super bullish, guys. So let's load the boat up and, and you know, expect higher. We're, the Fed is out of the way for now. We got the minutes out this week. That means, uh, you know, that known or that unknown is now known. Markets like that. Um, the rate, the anticipated rate cut isn't for another couple of weeks. So, you know, the market will chew on that and be excited about it until we get closer and it might get a little more nervous. But before that, before that rate cut towards the end of the month or, or anticipated rate cut for the end of the month, we also have earnings and earnings, you know, typically, uh, um, expectations are high, or, or I should say excitement is high about earnings. Earnings revisions um, have been coming down, and this <laughs> seems to happen every quarter. Earnings revisions come down as far as expectations, and then earnings are released, and oh boy, guess what? They're better than expectations, and markets rally. So, you know, you, you play this game long enough, and you see there, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, kind of a game, but you, but you learn the rules and, and play accordingly, right? Okay, so back to our setup. Super bullish. Let me point out a couple things that make me a little concerned. Number one, there's not a lot of sector leadership. We don't have, you know, tech or semis or industrials or whatever really pushing and, and pulling the market higher. So now, now if that emerges, then that's going to really set up a huge leg higher. But right now we don't have it. We've got some gaps here. We've got a gap down here at 297.50. We have a bigger gap down here at... 293, uh, 293.50, excuse me. So, you know, we're talking about, um, what, this is about 20, a little over 20, 25 um, S&P points. Uh, this is about 60 S&P points. Okay, so we could see a little pullback lower. Uh, let's look at Bollinger Bands. We're straight, we're trading in between the first and second deviation Bollinger Band. This is very healthy. Notice how this uptrend is contained within these Bollinger Bands. As long as we stay above this first de first standard deviation, you know, again, super bullish uh, and healthy. Uh, let's look at RSIs. Getting a little hot on our RSIs. Uh, 87 on the two-day RSI, 75 on the two on the five-day RSI, 70 on the 10-day, and 67 on the 14-day. So short term, we are getting a little hot here, but we all know that markets can go higher longer than any of us can stay solvent, right? So you don't want to fight that trend. Hence my calls into next week. Um, let's go, let's see, let me put back on, actually, nope, I'm gonna leave that. Let me delete my studies. Uh, yes, now, I, what I, the other thing I wanna show you is the VIX. The VIX, uh, this is a one year chart of the VIX. VIX closed at 1294, we're under 13. I mean, just by eyeballing this, you can see VIX is trading near the bottom of this chart. Back in here around 12 has been, you know, pretty, pretty super support. And again, typically VIX goes down, markets goes up and, uh, and, and the inverse. Um, but, you know, VIX is low and 
the VIX will not stay at an 11 or a 12 handle for, for long. Now, you know, everybody's interpretation of long is different, right? Long could be, you know, three, four, five days. Long could be three weeks. But the point is, you know, this, the VIX is low. Now, we do not use VIX for a zero, one, two, three day expiration trades. You hear me pound the table about that all the time. Please stop doing that. If you are doing that, please stop listening to people who tell you to do that because it is incorrect. VIX is a 30-day view, 30-day view of implied volatility, an implied move of the S&P. We don't care what a 30-day indicator tells us when we're doing a zero or one or two-day till expiration trade. Okay, let me put my soapbox away now. But VIX is low. It's not going to stay this low forever. So if I go back to the SPY, all I'm saying is, I mean, we've got a healthy uptrend and we do not want to fight it. But we don't want to necessarily, you know, not protect ourselves. Okay. So I've got long calls into next week. I'm very comfortable with those. I'm very excited about it. I've got my put hedge on. As, the, as those of you following my trades have seen, as the market moves higher each day, I roll my, my put hedge up. So higher strike puts. So, you know, staying closer to the money is my point. Um, so I roll my puts higher and out. So like today, I rolled puts from uh, this coming, actually I rolled them from Friday to Monday and then from Monday to Wednesday. So, so today's Thursday. I have puts expiring Friday, tomorrow. I rolled those to Monday and I actually rolled them again to Wednesday to even higher strikes. So I've got 298 puts here. If we come down and try to fill this gap, my puts are going to, are going to, um, go up in value, and they're also going to offset the loss that I would be experiencing for that time on those long calls that I have in next week. Okay, hope that was helpful, guys. Hope you guys are all making a ton of money out there, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.